morning, viewers. We are welcome to today's daily fountain. The topic before us this day is building for God's glory. Buildings for God's glory. Before we continue, shall we pray together? Father in heaven, we want to thank you for another day that you have given unto us. This 22nd day of the eighth month of the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2017. It is a privilege that we have seen today. We ask that this day you will teach us something new from your word. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the people out there say amen. Amen. Our text is taken from Ezra chapter 3, verse 8 to 11. Our topic again is building for God's glory. Let me read quickly. Ezra chapter 3, verse 8 to 11. In the second month of the second year after the arrival at the house of God in Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, son of Shedtiah, Jeshua, son of Jozadak, and the rest of their brothers, the priests and the Levites, and all who had returned from captivity to Jerusalem, began the work. Appointing Levites, 20 years of age, an order to supervise the building of the house of the Lord. Jeshua and his son and brothers, and Kadmia and his son, descendant of Hodavia, and the sons of Henadad, and their sons and brothers, all Levites, joined together in the supervising those working on the house of God. When the builders lay the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestment and with trumpet, and the Levite, the sons of Asaph, with cymbal, took their places to praise the Lord, as prescribed by David, king of Israel, which with praise and thanksgiving they sang to the Lord. He is good, his love to Israel endures forever. And all the people gave great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yesterday, we saw that the people worked according to correct priority. They had priority. When they returned from captivity back to Jerusalem, when they returned, there was need to rebuild Jerusalem. And the first thing, according to their priority, was to build the fence of the city. The fence standing for security. The fence standing for uh, protection. And the place of protection today, if you permit me to say, I will say, is prayers. For a prayerless body of Christ is a powerless, defenseless body of Christ. Prayer is very, very important. And so the, 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 their first priority was to build the security, the wall around the city. And after that, the next priority was the altar, the altar. The altar being the center of worship. A, a, a typical Jew does not, work, does not play with the worship of God. And so altar, the building of the altar become another priority. But today, we are looking at building for God's glory. In all of that, the building was to the glory of God. And we see this morning that in the building of the temple, there was supervision. And the supervision was left in the hand of priests, Levi, clergy, pastors, if you like, whichever one is applicable to you, to do the supervision of the building of the house of God. Somebody needs to supervise the building of the house of God. In fact, about two weeks they returned, the work of construction started. And in the construction of the work, the Bible says, they appointed priests whose ages are between below 30, below 30, to supervise the work. Why is the scripture so specific about the ages of people that will do the work? Yes, because they are the ones that are full of energy. They are the ones that can stay awake. Ah, you can take sample of that from our organizations today. Call for vigil, call for prayer warriors. The ages of people you see there are the young one, the vibrant one. Somebody call them the bulldozers of the church. And so here we see the appointment of those that we supervise, those that we, we, we look after the work, 
like the clergy that they are, priests, Levi that they, that they were, they are between the ages of below 30 to do the work because in them are strength. They are the one that can stay away. They are the one that are full of energy. They are the one that are full of terminals to do the work. And as they were doing the work, the work was going as the Bible say they were singing. Now, in verse um, verse 10, the Bible say, when the builders lay the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priest in their vestment. So there was no mistake about who is supervising the work. Oh, I see men today work and they leave the work of salvation to, to, to ordinary people. Here, you are not making mistake about who is supervising the work. The supervisor here is the clergy. The Bible says they saw them in their vestment, making sure that the work is done. And as the work was going on, the priest were singing, they were beauty, they were beating musical instruments so that the work can be sweet. There is a motivation from the pastor. There is a motivation from the priest, the clergy, so that the work can go. I do believe that as a clergy, as a pastor, permit me to quickly say, when I am talking about pastor, I am not talking about people like me alone. In this church, we believe in the priesthood of every believer. So, if every believer is a priest, it means that the work of supervision is in your hand. You must be committed to supervising the construction of the work of God. And above all, beauty, beautiful as we put structures in place, beautiful as we put the place of worship in place. But the Bible also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, that our body is the temple of the living God. So, if the physical construction building of the edifice we see can be supervised by the clergy, by the pastor, by the, by, 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 by the priest, how much more of the construction of the souls of men? So I want to challenge us today as priests that we all are Christians. How much time do we take to supervise the work of so willing. How much time do we take to supervise the younger ones who are just beginning? When new converts are made in the church, how much time do pastors, how much time do you take to make sure that these ones are established in the Lord? The Bible says, we, let, let, permit me to go back to that scripture so that we can see what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. Let's quickly read it together so that see what the, the emphasis the Bible is saying on the need to supervise the new beginner. What agreement is there for between the temple of God? Now, the temple of God referring to the, the child of God, the Christian, he that have just come in. You see, what agreement? The temple of God. For we are the temple of the living God. Every Christian is a temple. So if the physical temple was supervised by priests, priests, how much more, how much time do you have to supervise a beginner? The Bible says, as the foundation was laid. Now, when people give their life to Christ, how much time do we put aside? If there's any way the body of Christ is suffering today, is following up of new beginners. Now, this is a foundation that was laid, and there was jubilation, there was celebration. The Bible says the priest was singing, they were beating instruments, and people were rejoicing and they were dancing. Now, how much time do we have to celebrate new beginners in our church? How much time do we have? I don't know why the Bible was so specific about young ones. Yes, how much time do we have for younger generations in the church to see that as they are growing, they are celebrated. As they are growing, they are encouraged. As they are growing, they are made, you give them every support, enabling environment so that they can grow. Ah, uh, clergy, pastor, priest that you are, when I mention this office, I'm talking about everybody who is a believer and you are in a, a place of worship. How much time do you have for a beginner? This is a foundation. That is their own foundation so that they can grow and flourish. In doing so, 
we should make sure we supervise new beginners in the church. Follow them up so that they don't fall by the roadside. Follow them up so that they can grow. Follow them up so that they can be, they can be established and stand on their own. Here, the Bible says they were, they were supervised. That word supervision is very, very important. Little time do we have for supervision today in the house of God. Little time do we have for supervision, especially when it comes to the younger one. We leave them to themselves and they grow and we produce junks. Oh, God will deliver the church from production of uh, people that are not rooted in the world because there is no supervision. Get to several churches today. Some of us who are in the ordained ministry could be so busy that even to attend Bible studies is a problem. And that is where the foundation is laid. I, I'm sure as we listen to God speak to us today, we go back and say, God, help us. So that when men, young ones come to God, we will take time to follow them up. We will take time to, to, to lay their foundation. Because if the foundation is not properly laid, the Bible says, what can man do if the foundation is faulty? We can do nothing. God will help us so that as we, as we continue every day, our priority in building, especially the foundation. The foundation is very, very important. It is when the foundation is not properly laid that we can see falling out by the roadside. You can see men running away, helter skelter, from pole to pole. When they hear the name is mentioned somewhere, they are going to that place. Do you know the reason? Because the foundation is not properly laid. Here, at the laying of foundation, ah, the supervisors were there, and the supervisors are those that are, are, are called, those that are already have known God, and they call them the priests, the Levites, the pastors, if you like. Call it any name you want to call. Remember, you are also one. Because here we believe in the, in, in the priesthood of every believer. So let us supervise foundation of our children, of our younger ones, so that when they grow, they will stand. This morning, I challenge you as one of us, as one who is ordained, as one who is called, as one who is a priest, to take the work of the supervision of the work of God. Remember, we are calling building for God's glory. I am, I am happy that the topic did not say building structure. Yes, structure is what we are seeing here. But above that, building souls for Christ. These structures we are building, the Bible says, under a father, he within a twinkle of an eye, they will melt when heat comes. They will pass away. But there is one thing that will not pass away. Souls that are built, so that our supervised to be established will not pass away. They will inherit the kingdom of God. And of course, the number of years is forever and ever. It is my prayer that as we go out today, we will take to heart to be committed to the work of supervision, especially beginners in our church, especially beginners in our, in our, in our worship places, especially the beginner in our places of fellowship, especially beginner in our homes. Let's take time to establish our children. Let's celebrate them while they are young. And the Bible says, train up a child while he is young, and when he grows, he will not depart from me. Ensure they grow up to the glory of the Lord. Let us learn to praise God and thank Him when we build structures or lives. Whether it is physical structure, supervision is needed. And above all, because God is more interested in the building of souls, lives of human beings, oh, let's give it serious supervision so that this one will grow and remain. It is my prayer that as we continue, we, the, the grace to supervise will be given to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray together this morning? But remember to tune it again so that we can continue to do the work of the Lord. Let us pray together. Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you for the place of the, the, the physical structure that we have. Thank you for the place of building the lives of young particularly. My prayer is as we go out today, we know the devil is not happy. But my prayer for viewers and listeners today is that any weapon that is fashioned against us, it will not prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. As we go today, make an edge around us. Give us the grace to supervise. Give us the grace, O oh God, to do according to our calling. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Blessed be your name, O oh God. For we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. 
Thank you for being there. Tune in again, same station, same time. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Amen.